where I've got a center. <laughs> I'm in a quarterback. <laughs> Somebody to start the play. What a great kid. <coughs> and Kelsey Vincent's story is an amazing story. Lost her dad to ALS as a high school junior. Her passion for and love for football, she didn't lose it. She found refuge there and she put all her energy and focus into softball. She's come here and she, you know, she didn't, she hasn't had the greatest of careers in terms of numbers because of some injuries and some setbacks, but she's been the greatest teammate. She's been a rock. Her preparation and, and what she does day by day to get ready has been so steady. She is a calming force. She's quite funny. And a great sense of humor and fun to be around. And she understands how to put softball and life into perspective because of her life's journey. And she's been special to me. She's a special kid. Oh, I love her very, very much. And it's good to see the game reward her. And I think she's a great hitter and a great softball player, but she's a great person. And she's going to see many, many more good with kids, I believe. So, to recap the South Al series, I thought we played great. I thought it was a good series against two really good teams. I thought we got after each other really pretty good. Never seemed like we could, we could put them away or they can put us away. And I guess that's what it's supposed to be all about. I love the way our team fought back on Sunday. I mean, we, we really are down five or six runs probably. Probably most teams would pack their bags and go get on the bus. And we put our, ourselves in a position to win that game. And if that third baseman had make the play on on Shelley's line drive, I think we beat him. I think we come back from five or six down and we beat him in the last inning. And really what I saw in that last inning was that team decided to stand and fight. And it matters to them. They weren't satisfied getting two wins. They're not satisfied with what happened yesterday or the last inning. I mean, they wanted that game and their focus was there and their fight was there. And I really respect that. I think that's what champions are made of. Made of. And the way they stood and fought was impressive to me. Going forward, you know, hopefully we get out of the field today or tomorrow. We need to continue to stay in our groove. We have to get some kids going a little bit. The only way to do that is to get out on the field, get them some live bat practice and some live reps. We have some kids really going good at this moment, and we have some kids that have to get better. And we're going to continue to work through it. I think, uh, I think the next four or five days are going to be really important. Two conference series back to back, Arlington and then Georgia Southern. I think that this, they're going to be an important six games for us in the conference race. <clears throat> we're healthy, which is a good thing, and we're in full force, and we're ready to go. Ready to go. Good luck to our men and women's uh, basketball team. We're going to keep an eye on that. Pull up for the Cajuns. But uh, we're ready to go. Our team is ready to go. What did you learn about the team the last couple weekends? You know, nothing different. <clears throat> Nothing different. I mean, in that last inning, it didn't come from me. I mean, I, I just said, I, my voice was gone, and I just sat out. Whatever the score was, eight, nine to two, 
9 to 3. I just sit down. Put a pitch in her end to start the inning. Terrio, who's only had two at bats all year, she gets up, line drive, makes it. We bring Carbello off the bench, <coughs> who has struggled the whole year. She has a 7 8 9. Uh, no, she didn't. That's not correct. She got hit by the pitch and he didn't let her go down, but she still managed to get the ball. First and second, now nobody out top of our lineup. Hayden, line drive, base hit. Shelly Landry, line drive. And baseman. <laughs> and then we make a crazy base running mistake. It's crazy to, to, to get to the double play. That really killed us. Then Elkins, I don't remember what she did. Line drive and wall. Wall should have struggled all weekend. Line drive. <coughs> this one comes up, has a great and bad. Seven, eight, nine pitches following them all. I thought she was going to hit it out. We're going to tie it right there. Then a walk at her, which was probably a smirk there. And then Aaliyah, who has been struggling, grounds out into the to end the game. But hey, we had the time run at the home base. And the way they fought, and the way we put ourselves in that position, and the way that it was not only just the, the superstars. It was coming from a lot of different people. And you could feel that energy in the dugout, and hell, I stood up, got me excited. I was ready to go. <clears throat> you want to stand and fight, then I want to stand and fight with you. Those kids want to stand and fight, which is always, that's fun. I mean, that's what it's supposed to be. Coach, that's Two of the three losses on that road trip was a similar type thing. I mean, I don't know if there's been a more exhilarating moment than when Shelly hit the home run yeah. in Tuscaloosa, and you lost that game. But so that's two of those three losses, are kind of that same thing you're talking about. Could have won five out of six. I mean, however you see the glass, right? <laughs> could have won, could have won five out of six, and. Only flipping two pitches, one pit, one pitch in each game. If you flip one pitch in each game, we win five out of six. But hey, like Chelsea said, I agree with exactly what she said. We we're not good enough right now to go in those environments and and take care of business. We got we got a core group of kids who are good enough. But we don't have we don't have the supporting cast around them to go into those kind of environments and stand and win that kind of game. So we got to get better, and and I think putting them in that situation helps them understand what they have to do next time when they get there. Hopefully. Are you a, a half? Uh Full or half empty kind of guy? We know Kevin's a half empty kind of guy. Oh, Are you half full? I try to be a realist, you know. I try to, I try to, I try to call it like it is. All about reality, but I rather see it. I rather see it half full. Coach, what do we know about Arlington coming in here? <clears throat> We're just talking about it back there. They're aggressive at the plate. They swing the bats well. They got a good young team. They got two young freshman pitchers. She's trying to retool that roster, playing young kids. So it'll be a, it'll be a. I think I, I think it'll be a war. Our kids understand that once you get into conference, everybody gives us their best shot. So we got to be ready. And you know, look at the records and you know, look at the rosters. I don't even discuss with the team the names of the of their players. We know we're going to get their best shot. Let's approach it like Alabama. It's part of the maturing process, especially with the young players, to play someone like UTA, who's not a South Alabama, who's not an Alabama. And the, world of college softball that they treated the same way that they did the last two seasons. And get used to finishing, get used to playing, get used to getting the momentum 
and then keeping the momentum and then finishing the series. Which is hard to do. It's hard to do if you're not used to it. Get the momentum from pitch number one, take care of business, and then finish it. You gotta put a team away. They're not just gonna lay down and let you beat them. You have to go beat them. You have to go beat them. You have to go put them away. You have to continue to go out there and dominate them and find a way. You can't just do it on game one or game two. You have to do it every game. And that's that's how you win a Super Regional. You're not going to win a Super Regional if you just show up and play great in game one. And if we want to go where we want to go, we want to do what we want to do, we, we have to be able to we had to be able to close the deals. Speaking of closing deals, um, game, we all can probably have a pretty good guess who's going to be the game one starter and or the game two starter. What about the game three starter, or is that going to switch, be switched up this week? Well, Sunday was, Sunday was an interesting day in terms of the pitchers. Hopefully, we can find some consistency in what we want to do and give ourselves some more viable options. So Sunday, Jordan did not have it. Christina did not have it. Everybody asked why, why did we go to those two young pitchers in that environment? Because that was our, that's, was our, those were the options. Kylie really, really, Kylie Jones, Trey had threw the ball well. She just made a mistake. And then Alex, not too bad, made a mistake. They start, they start understanding that if you throw 12 great pitches in one bad one, they're going to make you pay. Good teams will make you pay for every bad pitch you throw. And I think, I think they're learning that lesson the hard way. <laughs> so it's, it's safe to say that one or both of those may pitch against them. Well, they have, to put the, they have to put themselves in a position to be available. And, and so yes, it is safe to say that. How has uh, Leandra progressed? Uh, this season, has she kind of taken that spot in the peak? She's done a good job. And Deandra is, is a good story, too. You know, she was a Juco All American her freshman year. Comes in here and starts her sophomore year. And I'm not going to say struggles, but she doesn't have a great year, doesn't have a terrible year, just kind of has a so so year. And then last year, she basically becomes a pitch runner. And this year she doesn't she doesn't win a start position going into the season. And then when her name gets called, she decides to keep getting hit, 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 and doesn't want to come out of the lineup, so you know, that's <coughs> That's great introspection on her part. That she, a lot of kids just sit and pout when they don't get their way. And you got to give her credit that she continued to work. And when the opportunity presented itself to her again, that she was able to get it done. Something that she wanted bad enough to get out there and get it done. And now that she has some confidence, just it started it started to snowball. So she's very she's very talented and I think it's a I think it's not a question of her talent. Now she has the right mindset and she's confident and hopefully let's let's let it just keep rolling. With her <coughs> continuing to roll that happens so uh, what uh, what happens with uh, Thomas and Corbello? What, what are the 
Terrio's coming down. You know what I'm saying? Taylor Terrio got choice <coughs> bats in South Al and all three of those bats were very productive. So now here she comes. The, the game is gonna give every one of those kids another shot. Sarah Carmelo keeps getting a shot in every every series. Base is loaded. You know, runs on second and third. She's she's always getting her chance to go up there and take a shot. And she continues to work hard and it just all helps to line up. You know what I mean? And I think I think she I think she's a good hitter. And she continues to get a lot of uh, a lot of reps and practice. And she just has to, she has to put some things together to be able to take it to another level. Megan Megan remains an option. You know, Megan remains an option. And you know, if if we have to start pinch hitting for uh, for DJ, then Megan will go in and play shortstop and get some advance there too. So all options are on the table right now. We we leave it above the table. We're trying to continue to develop our team. We're trying to fix that bottom part of the lineup so we can be more consistent. We have we have to be able to fix we have to be able to fix that. That's been our Achilles heel the last two or three years. It just continues to continues to haunt us. And we haven't been able to have that kind of consistency that we need to have. And we're still we're still working on it. Anybody got any solutions? I got called the uh, Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> that would be crazy, man, if, if we had to do that. If we had to trade. I think we get criticized now. <laughs> no, thank you. I think we can't trade players. Huh? Although it could be fun, but we probably wouldn't make it to a thousand wins. One bad trade. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to that, I didn't know, I didn't know my <coughs> talk of, about Coach Rubber show was going to become viral. I think it had 12 views. That's viral, right? If you get 12 people to watch it. Coach, don't start again. You made me cry. You were making her cry a minute ago. Point you three on him. Right, we talked about context. We talked about how, but probably left out the biggest piece. How selfless he is. He's a, self he's a selfless, a selfless man. And yeah, everybody here has young kids. Missing every one of your child's events to put it into your program, that's hard. I mean, I got two young kids. My daughter plays tonight, and I'm not going to be able to go. To miss every one of your kids events pitching in a state championship game, you don't get to go. You put it into that program. The context was in which when he did it is a wow. How he did it was a wow, but his selflessness really supersedes the other two. And without Without the fanfare, without the money, without the fame, I mean, when you're that selfless, it goes to the pureness of your heart. You got a pure heart. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> I appreciate it. Your, your, your selflessness supersedes all the rest of it. And you don't find that anymore in 
kind of just like, you know, it's not here. Like, you're an example. You're an example to all your coaches on how to conduct your business and how to run your program. So maybe I'll get 10 more views. <laughs> 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 <laughs>